Dua in, dua in times of misfortune, befalls, suffering, disaster, calamities, worries, hardship, distress, grief, anxiety, difficult, depression, testing, and afflictions Part 1. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to seek refuge with Allah a great deal from trials and tribulations. As it says in the Hadith of Zayd ibn the Abit that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Seek refuge with Allah from trials and tribulations, both visible and hidden. Narrated by Muslim, 2867 It was narrated from Ibn Abbas, May Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. My Lord came to him tonight in the most beautiful form and in this hadith he said that Allah said. O Muhammad, when you pray, then say, Allahumma inni azaluka fayel al kairat wa tark al munkarat, wa hub al masakin wa an tag li wa taramani wa tatuba, alaya. Wa in a ratabai, ibadika fitnatan, fikbidni alaika gaira. Maftun. O Allah, I ask you, to enable me, to do good deeds and avoid evil deeds, and to love the poor, and, I ask you, to forgive me, have mercy on me and accept my repentance. If you will that some trial should befall. Your slaves then take me to you, i.e., cause me to die, without having subjected to that trial. Narrated by Al-Tirmidhi, 3233, Al-Albani said of this hadith in Sahih Al-Targib wa Al-Tarhib, 408, it is Sahih li Gari Hai. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to seek refuge from trials and tribulations because, when they come they do not befall the wrongdoers only, rather they befall everyone. It is a good idea to acquaint ourselves with the ahadith that mention dikers which have to do with trials and tribulations and disasters. So that we may call upon Allah with these words and spread this knowledge and memorize whatever we can of them. And understand their meaning so that we can worship Allah by means of them, because they are the greatest words that can be spoken in these circumstances. Dua when there is something troubling or if anything befalls you. Qadr Allahahu wa Masha Fal. Allah has decreed, it, and what He willed, He has done. And in Allah I should put my trust alone. Say, nothing shall ever happen to us except what Allah has ordained for us. He is our Maula, Lord, Helper, and Protector. And in Allah let the believers put their trust. Surah Taba, 51. O Messenger, tell these hypocrites. Nothing will afflict us except what Allah has written for us, He is our protector, the one whom we take refuge in, and we put our trust in Him in all our affairs. Let the believers place their trust in Him for He is sufficient for them and the best of guardians. At Taba, 51. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said. The Messenger of Allah, said, The strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer, although both are good. Strive for that which will benefit you, seek the help of Allah, and do not feel helpless. If anything befalls you, do not say, if only I had done such and such, rather say, Qadar Allahu wa Masha'i Fayala, Allah has decreed and whatever He wills. He does. For, saying, if, opens, the door, to the deeds of Satan. Grade, Sahih, Darussalam. Reference, Sunan ibn Majah 79 in, Book Reference, Introduction, Hadith 79 English Translation, Volume. 1, Book 1, Hadith 79. Dua when afflicted with a calamity, misfortune, suffering and asking Allah for better than what was lost. Am Salamah, reported, I heard the Messenger of Allah, saying, when a person suffers from a calamity and utters. Inna lalahi wa inna ilahi rajian. Allahumma journey fi muzabadi, wa aklif li kairan minha. We belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. O Allah! Compensate me in my affliction, recompense my loss and give me something better in exchange for it. Then Allah surely compensates him with reward and better substitute. Also narrated with the following words in Tirmidhi, when one of you is afflicted with a calamity, he should say. Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajian, alahama indaka atasabu muzabadi fa journey fiha wa abdil li kairan minha. We belong to Allah, and to him we do return. O Allah, I seek reward with you for my affliction, so reward me for it, and replace it for me with something better. Text of the Hadith Umulib reported that Am Sulamah narrated 
On an occasion Abu Sulamah came back after he was with Allah's Messenger, and said, I heard Allah's Messenger recite a statement that made me delighted. He said, No Muslim is struck with an affliction and then says Asturja, saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajin, from Allah we come and to him we will return, when the affliction strikes, and then he says, O Allah! Reward me for my loss and give me what is better than it, except that Allah will do that for him. Am Sulamah said, so I memorized these words. When Abu Sulamah died I said Asturja, and said, O Allah, compensate me for my loss and give me what is better than it. I then thought about it and said, Who is better than Abu Sulamah? When my idda finished, Allah's messenger, asked for permission to see me while I was dying a skin that I had. I washed my hands, gave him permission to enter and handed him a pillow, and he sat on it. He then asked me for marriage and when he finished his speech. I said, O Messenger of Allah! It is not that I do not want you, but I am very jealous and I fear that you might experience some wrong mannerism from me for which Allah would punish me. And I am old and have I'll, children. He, then said, As for the jealousy that you mentioned, Allah the Exalted will remove it from you. As for being old as you mentioned, I have suffered what you have suffered. And as for what what you mentioned of having children, then verily your children are my children. She said, I have submitted to Allah's Messenger. Allah's Messenger married her. And Am Sulamah said later, Allah compensated me for Abu Sulamah with someone better than him, the Messenger of Allah. Sahih Muslim 11 4, 918, Imam Ahmad, Al Musnad 26 262, 16344, Abu Dawud 3 190, number 3119, and Atirmidi 3511, and declared authentic by Al Albani. Also see Sahih Al Jami 5 432, number 6479. Dua upon seeing someone afflicted by a illness or disability or one who is away from Allah and his deen, religion. The Messenger of Allah said, Whoever sees an afflicted person and says, Alhamdulillah Hiladi Afani Mimabtalaka Bihi Wa Fatalani Allah Kathira Mimin Kalaka Tafdila. Praise be to Allah who had saved me from what he had afflicted you with, and for honoring me over many of his creations. He, or she, will never be afflicted by it, this particular affliction. Note, the Prophet, would say this du'a without letting the afflicted person hear him, as not to hurt him. Atirmidhi number 3431 and 3412 Ibn Majah number 3892 and classed as Hassan by Al Albani in Sahih Al Tirmidhi, 3 153. Also see Sahih Al Kalam Al Taib number 229 and See Sahih Al Kalam Al Taib number 229 and Al Silsila Al Sahiha 2 153. Abu Huraira said, Whoever sees someone being trialed and says, All praise to Allah who has pardoned me from that which you have been afflicted with and favored me above you, and above all of his creation. Then he has indeed given sufficient gratitude, shukr, for that blessing. Taken from Yudada Sabarin by Ibn al Qayyim, page 280. Authenticated by Sheikh al Albani in Sahih al Jami as Sagar 555. Explanation His saying, who sees an afflicted person, means the one who is suffering from any kind of diseases and illnesses, or suffering from being distant from Allah and his religion. His saying, and preferred me to many of those who created, maybe it refers to the group of afflicted people, and Allah's preferences here is to save him from the affliction befall on them. This dua should be said in secret, so that he hears himself, and does not let the one who is affected. Hears it in order not to give him a feeling of pain unless his affliction is because of his disobedience. al imam and Nawawi and others mentioned he shouldn't raise his voice with the dua to the extent the person who is afflicted can hear him. Ash Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, was the one who mentioned it should be said when seeing a person who is afflicted in his religion or body. As found in his book, Adab al Masi ila Salatu. This dua is said whether the person being afflicted is a Muslim or a non Muslim. Ibn al Arabi, said when explaining the hadith. His statement, if he sees a person of trials, which has the meaning of being trialed in his body, such as with having leprosy, or with being extremely short, or being extremely tall, or being blind, or being crippled, or the shape of his hand is distorted or its likes. Similarly, or a religious-related affliction similar to wrongdoing and oppression, and an innovation and disbelief, and other than it. Dua to be grateful for what we have, to not complain or there is something not to like. Alhamdulillah. Allah Kali Hal. All praise and thanks are only for Allah in all circumstances.
Exact meaning of Alhamdulillah ala kulli hail. The meaning of Alhamdulillah ala kulli hail is, all praise and thanks are only for Allah in all circumstances. 1. Get in an accident. The use of the words Alhamdulillah al kulli hail during the disaster, we can refer to the following hadith of the history of Ibn Majah. So say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hail when someone gets something he doesn't like, for example a disaster. 2. Got bad news. Besides a disaster, when receiving bad news, it is advisable to the say the words, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hail. Everyone will love the good news, but sometimes in our daily lives we also get bad news. For example, someone told us that the fruit crops in the fields were stolen. In such a situation, Islam forbids us to complain, much less condemn the situation. We still have to be patient. It is advisable to say it silently, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hail. Praise be to Allah in all conditions. 3. That I end pain, sadness or sadness. In a state of pain, sad or sad, we are also advised to say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hail. So, we are grateful not only for our happiness, but also for the fact that we were unlucky, we can't stop thanking God. Pain, irritation or sadness is a test for us. If we are satisfied with the test, then Allah will be pleased with us. Saying Alhamdulillah in all situations. There has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent example for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah much. 33 21. There has been for you an excellent example in what Allah's Messenger said, carried out and practiced, for he presented his own noble self and personally engaged in battle. So how after that can you be miserly with your souls over his soul? And only he who is hopeful of the last day, works for it and remembers Allah abundantly will follow Allah's messenger, peace be upon him. As for the one who is not hopeful of the last day and does not remember Allah abundantly, he does not follow his messenger, peace be upon him. al 21 There are many sunan, plural of sunnah, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left for us to learn from and emulate. Unfortunately, many sunan have been forgotten and so we are not aware of them. Recently going through some changes in my life, I remembered this sunnah that we should revive by Ithnila. Narrated from Aisha radiallahu anha, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw something that pleased him, he would say, Alhamdulillah hil lathi by anaymatihi to tima salihat, and when he saw something that displeased him, he would say, Alhamdulillah, Allah kuli hail. Narrated in Sunan ibn Majah, classified as Sahih according to Sheikh Albani Rahmahullah in Silsalata Sahihah Hadith 265. Alhamdulillah hil lathi by anaymatihi to tima salihat means, All praise and thanks are only for Allah, the one who, by his blessing and favor perfected goodness good works are accomplished. Alhamdulillah, Allah kuli hail means, all praise and thanks are only for Allah in all circumstances. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet, said, a grateful eater is equal to a patient fasting person. Sunan Ibn Majah Book 7, Hadith 1764. This is a very important lesson. In this Hadith, the Prophet, is telling us all to be grateful for what we have, to not complain. He compares the rewards of being a grateful eater to be like a patient fasting person. What are things which may from our gratitude? The answer is our desires. Desiring is a condition we create in ourselves to not be happy until we get what we want. It is looking for things we want but don't yet have. Our desires are often are not even self-imposed, we are influenced by advertisements, looking at social media comparing ourselves to what others have got. It's often things we don't even care that deeply about. This feeling leads us to being dissatisfied and ungrateful. When we come poverty we can appreciate the smallest of things in life, just look at our microwave it's truly incredible, in just 20 seconds we get our food warm so we don't have to eat it cold. Talk about being privileged. There are millions of these things in our life just like the microwave that we grow accustomed to. If we actively look for things to be appreciative about, the world starts to show us things we didn't previously see but were right in front of our eyes. There's only one person we have to thank for these blessings and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is where the phrase Alhamdulillah Allah kulli hail becomes useful for the believer. It is a way for Muslims to express their appreciation for their Rab, their Lord.